The Brookings Institution has followed every step of this historic election cycle with opinions, commentary, and research about the campaign issues and the candidates themselves. Hi, I'm Gigi Hinton inviting you to join Brookings for an informative weekly podcast called Transition Tracker. Every week, a Brookings scholar will examine an issue that the president-elect will have to face. And we'll hear from Brookings expert Stephen Hess on what the chief executive needs to do to successfully transition from the Senate to the White House. He'll also have some advice for the president-elect on how to avoid some of the mistakes that his predecessors might have made. And we want to hear from you. We'll be taking the Brookings cameras into the streets to hear what you think the new chief executive needs to do between now and Inauguration Day. So let's begin by asking, what do we do now? Hello, I'm Ron Nesson with Brookings Senior Fellow Steve Hess, author of What Do We Do Now? A Handbook for the President-Elect. Steve's book is a primer for the new president to help him get his White House and his administration up and running. Steve, uh, your book is based on first-hand experience. What, what was the first transition you worked on? I go back uh, half a century because I was a young uh, speechwriter on President Eisenhower's staff. So in 1960, 1961, I was eagerly waiting there at the door uh, for, the, uh, for the Kennedy people to arrive. So the first transition I was in was leaving government, not coming into government. Uh, and then uh, eight years later, uh, when Richard Nixon returned to the White House and I came in uh, as the Deputy Assistant to the President for Urban Affairs, Pat Moynihan's Chief of Staff, I was coming in. So I've seen them going out and coming in. I've heard uh, stories of, of incoming White House staff people walking around uh, during the transition period with copies of your book in their hand as a guide. <laughs> well, that was true. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, if it were true, it would it would be it would be helpful because uh, it's it's amazing uh, how barren uh, our transition is. I mean, it's not like a parliamentary system where uh, the prime minister goes out the back door of Number Ten Downing Street, the new prime minister comes in the front door, and there's a shadow government waiting. There isn't, uh, and uh, in this period, which is often about ten weeks, uh, the incoming people can make some terrible mistakes. Uh, so uh, that's partly what I was up to, trying to help them. You urged the new president to, under, to list five reasons why he thinks voters chose him. Mm -hmm. And then you suggest that the new president list the five promises he made as a candidate. What's the what's the purpose of that? Well, exercise? the purpose is, of course, that a, pres that a presidential candidate makes a lot of promises. And the first thing you really have to do is sort them out. One of those long-term promises that you're not going to be able to deliver on immediately, they take a lot of money, they take a lot of time, health care would be like that. And then what are the things that you can do very quickly because you want to show uh, the electorate that you're up and running? So sort them all out. Uh, and for example, uh, the, the, the example of, of how not to do it was uh, Bill Clinton during his transition. Uh, saying that he was going to move fast on the gays in the military issue. Gays in the military was not a leading priority of his, but wow, he got hung up on that uh, when he became president. Thank you very much, Steve. We're out of time, unfortunately, for today, but we'll be back next week with more advice on what the new president should do as he prepares to move into the Oval Office. See you then. I think the most important thing the president-elect has to do right now is fix the economy. It's the economy, obviously. I think that it is. Uh, and there's different aspects to it. There's the domestic economy, obviously. Uh, but there's lots of global ramifications as well that I think the president-elect, whoever he is, is going to have to deal with. I think that the next president uh, supports first uh, bring, bring home to all the troops. I just recently myself graduated from a master's program and I haven't been able to find full-time work myself um, since graduating. I have more than a few friends in the same situation. The immigration is very important because many people like me, we come for, for a dream on this in America. Be a part of the presidential transition. 
Join our pundits and experts for The Scouting Report, our live web chat every Wednesday afternoon at 1230. Log on to www.brookings.edu transition.